Let's uh, talk now to chemical weapons expert Professor James Tour. He joins us uh, live now from the US. Professor, it's suspected that sarin was used in that chemical attack in Syria. What is it and is it easily produced? It's easily produced. Sarin is a nerve gas and uh, it, it's different than a, a, a typical chemical weapon being a nerve agent. It's, it's a lot more toxic. And if you are a victim of a sarin attack, are you likely to die or can you actually survive an attack of this kind? Well, pe people can survive, but the likelihood of death is really quite high with sarin. Sarin is, being a nerve gas, it's, it's much akin to when a person sprays uh, an insecticide on an insect and the insect starts uh, 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 writhing in pain for a couple of minutes and then dies. It's very much the same with, with a nerve agent. Uh, it works the same way that an insecticide works on an insect. It's just that their enzymatic cavity is a little bit different than the size of our enzymatic cavity. And you design the molecule a little bit differently and so it would not affect an insect. But for people, what it does is it, it, uh, they lose all motor control and they, they can no longer even, even control their breathing. And so they just start writhing just as an insect would, and so you, you, uh, very you, hard to breathe. You, you say it's easily produced. So, for example, if, for example, stockpiles of sarin were removed from Syria, it can easily be made again, not just by authorities, but by anybody? Uh, anybody with access to some raw materials. The raw materials are not gotten at a, at a grocery store, but they can, they can come in very easily. Uh, one can buy on the chemical market uh, items that are just one step away from sarin, easily two steps away. So a, a chemist with about a master's level of training can produce sarin quite easily. So the rebels in Syria could easily have used chemicals themselves in an attack of that kind? Uh, they could if they, if they had recruited some chemists with, with a few years of training in chemicals. Uh, it's not something that somebody on the street could pick up in, in, in a few weeks. It, they need a little bit more training than that and they need proper facilities to make it. They need a chemical hood, but it certainly could be made. Presumably there are other sorts of chemical weapons, though, available? Yes, there's many different types of chemical weapons that are available. Some of them easier to make than sarin, uh, not quite as effective as sarin is, but uh, uh, easily made and, and uh, easily brought in, easily transported. And what about this idea of maybe military intervention bombing uh, areas or depots that are suspected of holding chemical weapons? That sounds quite reckless. Is that the way to go about removing that sort of threat? Well, generally what will happen is if, if exposed to uh, bombings, it can spread the chemical. So all those in the region would, would be at risk uh, once the chemicals are, are exploded in that way. There are other ways that, that are needed to to remove these sorts of weapons, and that's generally by hydrolysis. In other words, adding to a large amount of water or water with uh, sodium hydroxide. Now, I understand that you conducted an experiment that proved that making chemical weapons is very easy to do. If that's the case, why haven't we seen more terrorist attacks using chemical weapons? Well, one of the reasons is probably because of natural selection. Those that try to make it are, uh, if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to die in making it. And so uh, it's risky business if you don't know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, if you have, a, again, about a master's level of training, we did several tests to assess what level of training one would need. And uh, uh, one can pull this off really quite easily. And access to the chemicals is easy and then uh, dispersion is easy. Why there have been not as many attacks with, with chemical weapons, I'm not sure, but there are, there are actually uh, dozens of documented chemical attacks I know in the United States. They don't receive a lot of attention, but uh, there are, are documented attacks. So just finally, we can't rid the world of chemical weapons, can we? No, that's absolutely impossible. They're too easy to make, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they are frightening if made. Professor, thank you very much indeed. Chemical weapons expert, Prof Professor James Tor, live from Austin, Texas. Really interesting to hear your thoughts on this and get your uh, expert knowledge on chemical weapons. Thank you very much indeed.